Hi all, today we are going to see the magnetic field intensity due to long coaxial transmission line. So let us take a coaxial transmission line, let us assume it is having a conductor, inside conductor, that inside conductor is having a radius of A. Let us assume that outside also there is one more conductor which is coaxial to this, the center is coinciding with this one. This is my outside conductor. This outside conductor like I can extend like this, this is my outside conductor. So let us assume this conductor is making a radius of B to the inner side and the outer periphery is having a radius of C. So let us assume the current carried by the inner conductor is I in the direction of AZ. Let us assume I am taking this as AZ direction, I in the direction of AZ. And the second one is carrying a current of minus I in the direction of AZ. Because that means the first conductor is carrying current in forward direction, second conductor is carrying current in the reverse direction. So let us see how the intensity will vary as we are moving away from the conductor. So how this H is moving with respect to away from the conductor. So the first case, I can take my rho less than A. So that means you are taking inside the conductor. So at every place we can tell that closed integration of h dot dl will be equal to the current enclosed. So here I can write my value of the h is equal to h phi in the direction of h a phi because we know as per the right hand rule. So the curl finger indicates the direction of the field and your thumb indicates the direction of the current. So curl finger indicates in the direction of the change in the phi or the a phi direction. That's why I have written this as a phi. Now coming to the differential length, differential length will be rho d phi in the direction of a phi. So because you have to take the amperian line, amperian line I have told you that amperian line should be like that. At every point either the h will be either having the constant magnitude or zero. That means the amperian line for this if you are taking at some point let us assume it should be having the same shape and amperial line should be taken like that. Always the area that we are considering will be inside that amperian line. So this differential length I am calculating. This differential length will be equal to rho d phi in the direction of a phi rho depends on what location you are doing. In our current example, we are taking inside the conductor. So from this, this left hand side, this left hand side I can write as LHS will be integration from 0 to 2 pi rho into h phi d phi. This will be equal to, because if you are doing the integration, this will be nothing but 2 pi rho multiplied by h phi. This is what we get. So let us take the current enclosed. So current enclosed by the circular path, the current enclosed by the circular path will be because we are only using some percentage of the total area. So we can tell the current per unit area will be equal to I divided by A square multiplied by the area that is enclosed. So this will become rho square because we know the current is equal to current per unit area because I divided by pi into the radius square pi r square. So, so that pi pi will cancel, that's why this becomes i divided by a square multiplied by rho square. We are taking up to the length rho. Let us assume I am taking a circle inside, that means inside I am taking a small part. Getting it? So from this, because this is the current enclosed, I am equating the RHS to the left LHS. So this will become h phi will be equal to rho into i divided by 2 pi a square in the direction of a phi. This is for rho less than a. This is what we get. So if you are taking your value of rho is less than a, so we are getting the value of h phi will be rho i by 2 pi a square in the direction of a phi as a rho is changing. So automatically it is changing because a is fixed because it is directly proportional to rho. So from this we can tell that the magnetic field intensity will go on increasing as the value of your rho is increasing. This is my value of the rho, oh sorry, this is my value of the rho. As the distance is increasing, it is going on increasing. It will become maximum on the surface. The maximum value on the surface will be this rho becomes equal to A. So this will become I by 2 pi rho. So that will be the value on the surface. So let us take the case of B. So at the surface, this will be equal to I divided by 2 pi rho. So this is the maximum magnitude at this location. So let us take the case that the value of A is less than or equal to rho is less than or equal to B. That means the rho is in between a and b. So in that case, we can tell the value of h phi. h phi will be nothing but 2 pi rho in the here phi h phi because this we have already calculated before. So 2 pi rho into h phi that is not going to change. This will be current enclosed by it. The current enclosed by this will be if you are taking outside because in this loop, the current enclosed will be the total current enclosed by 
the first conductor so current carried by the first conductor is equal to i so from this i can calculate my value of h is equal to i by 2 pi rho a phi this will be between a is less than or equal to rho is less than or equal to b this is the value of h so here you can see the value of h is inversely proportional to rho as you are moving so this is up to point number b so i am again extending up to point number b what is happening the value of the h is gradually decaying so what is the value of h at this point so at this point the value of the h will be i by 2 pi into that rho value is now becoming equal to b i by 2 pi b so this is the value that is obtained here let us see the third case when it is varying going through the conductor that means b is less than or equal to or rho is less than c in that region how it is going to change so here two things are there so the i is in the plus a z direction so the total current enclosed will be equal to i and there is one more current the current in minus a z direction that's how we are representing with minus a so that will be equal to i into so the current current per unit area that will be equal to current divided by because here you can see this is the hollow cylinder hollow cylinder having the thickness of c minus b that is the value of the thickness so this will become c square minus b square this is the value this i have to multiply with rho square minus b square so you may get dot how this comes so if you want to calculate the area what is the area enclosed by this current per unit area will be so outer side that will be equal to pi c square that is outer value minus pi into b square so this is the value of the surface area through which the current is passing so this i can write as pi into c square minus b square so current per unit area will be i divided by pi into c square minus b square so now i am taking at a point rho within this second conductor because in between the conductor so this instead of c we are taking up to rho so this will become rho square minus b square i think this is clear to you so let us proceed further so this rhs will be equal to one current is i and second current is in the opposite direction having magnitude i multiplied by rho square minus b square divided by c square minus b square so this i can write as i into c square minus rho square divided by c square minus b square so this is the value we get when you are simplifying this one because i minus this one so from this i can write my value of h5 will be equal to i into c square minus rho square divided by 2 pi rho into c square minus b square in the direction of a5 where b is less than rho is less than c so again here also it is following the inverse characteristic and it is continuously changing so let us see what will be the value outside this one so that it will be clear to you when rho is greater than the value of c when rho is greater than the value of the c then what is the current enclosed the current enclosed will be positive current is passing in the I z direction and one more current is there minus i passing in the i direction because of second conductor so total current net current that is enclosed will be equal to zero or we can tell the h will be equal to zero for low greater than zero sorry grow greater than c so same thing will be the case here you just substitute rho is equal to c you are getting the same thing so we can tell that the magnetic field intensity up to c will be inversely proportional and it will go on decaying at a faster rate it will become zero here so in this way it is going to vary that means it is varying from zero to a directly proportional a to b it will gradually decrease at a slow slow slope and b to c the slope will be very steep and it will fall down and after c it will become equal to zero this is what how the infinitely long coaxial transmission line it comes i hope how the magnetic field intensity due to infinite long coaxial transmission line is completely clear to you if you still have any queries you can leave your comments in the comment section below i will answer to your queries from there thank you thank you very much